college students across the country protesting over emotional triggers and they need their safe spaces, some even causing administrators to resign. But one college president has had a much different reaction. In an open letter to students, Oklahoma Wesleyan University, the president wrote, Oklahoma Wesleyan is not a safe place, but rather a place to learn, to learn that life isn't about you, but about others, this is a place where you will quickly learn that you need to grow up. This is not daycare. This is a university. The reaction has been unbelievable. And the president of the university, Dr. Everett Piper, joins us now live from Tulsa. Good morning to you, doctor. Mr. Ducey. It's great to have you. So what prompted this open letter to these narcissistic kids who go to college these days? Well, I want to make it clear. My letter, uh, my op-ed, is a weekly article that I write for the local newspaper and for okay. our website. And it is more directed at my industry, the academy, the mm -hmm. university system, than it is at a specific student. And what prompted it was a student was concerned over a chapel message that was on 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, and he felt uncomfortable with the message and, if you will, played the victim card afterwards by challenging the speaker for making him feel uncomfortable. And when he did that, what did you think? Well, I'm more interested in you learning virtue than playing the victim card. I'm more interested in you feeling uncomfortable during a chapel and you feeling some discomfort as a result of going to our college and our university. College is not about being safe. College is about learning what's good. C.S. Lewis tells us the great uh, lion Aslan is not safe, but he's good. And I would paraphrase that and say the great lion of the liberal arts university is not safe, mm -hmm. but it is good. It's about challenging your character, not coddling you so that you feel comfortable. What do you make of what is going on on a number of college campuses across this country? I would call it ideological fascism, quite frankly. And let me explain that. Do we want ideological fascism where you're required to conform? You must agree with us. You must believe like we believe. You must believe the ideas that we hold dear. And if you deviate, if you have a contrary idea, we will squash you. We will crush you. We will expel you. That's ideological fascism. That's not academic freedom. It's not intellectual liberty. The liberal arts university was established some 1,000 years ago to educate a free man and a free woman and a liberated people. And that liberty is found in the pursuit of truth, mm -hmm. not the protection of opinions. Yeah. You know, uh, doctor, when I was going to the Can University of Kansas, which is a couple hundred miles uh, north of where you're sitting right now, I remember you would hear every viewpoint on campus any given day. But it seems like there are some who are going to college these days who just want to hear their point of view, not only from their friends, but from the person who's teaching the class. And if it's not that way, there's a problem. Well, and again, it's ideological fascism to control the ideas and control the debate to the point where anyone who disagrees with you is unwelcome. They're verboten. They're expelled. They cannot be heard. Again, this is not a safe place, a yeah. safe space per se. This is a place to learn. And the free and open, robust exchange of ideas is facilitated by the classical yeah. liberal arts academy, not this foreclosed uh, a dumbed-down discussion that is policed by people that are in power.